Story recapped here. Today I'm gonna explain a drama, horror, and mystery film called Jezebel. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Upon learning she's pregnant, Jezebel Laurent, or Jessie, decides to move in with her fiancé Mark. However, on their way to Mark's place, their car is suddenly hit by a truck. The doctor then tells Jessie about her injuries, informing her she'll be able to walk within three to four months of therapy. As if that isn't enough, Jessie loses Mark and their unborn child. Two months later, Jessie's nurse informs her that she still needs to continue doing therapy at home. The nurse then asks if she has a relative they can call, but Jessie says her mother died of cancer when she was a baby, while her father gave her to her aunt to be raised after her mother died. Despite not seeing the man in years, Jessie is forced to call and ask him if he can pick her up. The next day, Jessie's father, Leon, picks her up from the hospital and brings her to his house in St. Francisville, Louisiana. There, Leon helps Jessie to her wheelchair and takes her inside his home, where he sympathizes with his daughter for what happened to her. Leon then pushes a large cabinet to the side, revealing the room of his late wife, Kate. Leon tells Jessie she needs to stay in her mother's room because all the other rooms are upstairs, helping her to bed before giving her a plastic bag containing her stuff. When she's alone, Jessie goes through her belongings and finds an old photograph of her with Preston, her friend. That night, as Jessie prepares to sleep, she feels uncomfortable seeing herself in the mirror and decides to draw the bed curtain. Then, she suddenly hears someone humming, and as she looks through the curtain, she sees a woman sitting in her wheelchair. However, when Jessie pulls back the drape, she doesn't find anyone around. The next day, Jessie is happily listening to the radio when the music is suddenly interrupted, replaced by the sound of a woman crying. Then, she hears the phone ringing, but she can't answer it because it's upstairs. So Jessie just returns to a room and looks around, finding some of her mother's stuff. She also sees a small medallion on the wall, but when she's about to touch it, it suddenly falls and rolls under the bed. Despite not being able to walk, Jessie forces herself to stand and eventually loses her balance. She then finds a box under the bed with her name, containing videotapes all addressed to her. Curious, Jessie watches the first tape, where her mother Kate calls her Jezebel. Kate says she told Jessie's father to give her that tape on her 18th birthday, knowing she'd be gone by then and wishing her a happy birthday. Kate then tells Jessie that she thought about having a cake, but explaining all that to their cook, Mrs. Davis, would have been too weird. After that, Kate gives Jessie a tarot reading about death, which means transition. Kate also mentions the suit of cups, the water sign, wondering if Jessie is now a swimmer. However, the reading suddenly turns dark, for Kate sees that there's a presence in the house with Jessie. Kate soon realizes it's a female, and she wants Jessie out of the house, saying it's hers. As Kate stops the reading, Leon suddenly shows up behind Jessie, startling her. After turning off the television, he demands to know where Jessie got the tape and angrily breaks it in half. Then, Leon carries Jessie to a chair and tells her not to snoop around again, before throwing her wheelchair into the bayou. That evening, Jessie wakes up and finds herself strapped to a gurney before being kissed by her mother. Then, she gets confused when she sees herself on an operating table undergoing surgery. As if that isn't odd enough, Jessie is taken to the living room, where she finds a burnt man preparing for a ritual. After that, an EMT chokes Jessie with blood using a ventilator, but Jessie soon wakes up and realizes she just had a nightmare. As Jessie tries to catch her breath, she once again sees a woman entering her room in her wheelchair through the curtain. The woman then approaches the bed and tries touching Jessie's bracelet, but when Jessie asks who she is, the woman simply whispers, Jezebel. The woman also tries to touch Jessie's face, leaving her screaming and terrified. The following morning, Jessie finds a wheelchair in her room. She then joins her father for breakfast, and Leon apologizes for what happened the previous day. He also tells Jessie she's using her mother's old wheelchair, making her smile. Once Leon is done eating, he gets up and asks Jessie if she only found one tape. However, instead of telling her father the truth, Jessie says there's only one videotape. Moments later, Leon leaves with his friend without saying goodbye to Jessie. Then Jessie sees some flashing lights across the bayou, wondering what they are. However, since she can't go there to investigate, Jessie chooses to watch her mother's second video instead. Once again, Kate calls Jessie by her full name, saying it's been three weeks since their last reading. She says there's been a lot of weird stuff going on there, so she asked Moses, her friend from church, about it. Moses taught Kate how to read cards, so she showed him her daughter's reading, and he said that the two presences in the house were both Jessie. Kate then asks Jessie if she's been having nightmares, saying the presence is an inner demon. 
Kate also mentions Jessie's accident, telling her daughter to stop blaming herself and it wasn't her fault. After that, Kate gives Jessie a new reading. Once again, the death card comes up, and Kate assures Jessie it only means transition. However, Kate's demeanor suddenly changes when she sees the rest of the cards, saying she sees a horrible death. Kate then moves out of the frame, and the television suddenly turns off, leaving Jessie confused. The next day, Jessie hears some strange sounds coming from the second floor. She then calls out to her father and receives no response, and suddenly, she hears something breaking upstairs. Seconds later, Jessie's therapist, Rosara, lets herself inside the house, asking if Jessie knows she's coming. After that, they immediately begin Jessie's physical therapy, and Rosara leaves her in the bathtub before going to fix her bed. As Jessie relaxes in the bathtub, she doesn't notice the door quietly closing and the sink slowly filling up with dirty water. Then, the water in the bathtub becomes dirty too, and a woman with long black hair suddenly appears in the tub with Jessie. The woman carefully reaches for Jessie's bracelet before screaming without warning, pulling Jessie under the water and trying to drown her. Luckily, Jessie manages to get out of the bathtub, but the woman follows her and relentlessly attacks her. With all her might, Jessie pushes the woman away and heads for the door, trying to open it. However, the woman pins Jessie against the wall and throws up black liquid on her face. Upon hearing the commotion, Leon and Rosara burst into the bathroom and find Jessie on the floor. So Rosara helps her up while Leon tells her to calm down, saying it's nothing. Then, Leon scolds Rosara and tells her to leave before searching Jessie's drawers. Meanwhile, Jessie wants to know what Leon meant by nothing. And as Leon finds Kate's tapes, he tells Jessie that it's her mother's fault she's scared. Enraged, Leon prepares to throw the tapes away, but Jessie stops him and says it's all she has of Kate. However, Leon argues that the thing on the tapes is not her mother, indicating she changed due to her illness. They found out that Kate had tumors in her brain five weeks into her pregnancy, and since she refused to do chemo, Leon believes her sickness ate her mind. Still, Jessie insists she wants to watch the tapes, but Leon is adamant about destroying them. After arguing with Jesse, Leon heads straight to the shed to burn Kate's tapes. However, a supernatural force suddenly sets him on fire and locks the shed, leaving him trapped inside. The fire quickly spreads throughout the place, and although he attempts to escape, he still dies in the fire. On the other hand, Jesse tries her best to go outside and help her father, only to fail in the end. At Leon's wake, Jesse reunites with her old friend Preston. He says he's been trying to call her, so Jesse informs him that she couldn't answer the phone because it's upstairs. Then, as they talk, Jesse sees the burnt man from her nightmare and suddenly passes out. Moments later, Jesse eventually regains consciousness and sees an EMT by her side, tending to her needs. After taking Jesse home, Preston falls asleep in her wheelchair and is awakened by the soft touch of the unknown woman. Meanwhile, Jesse is surprised to see that Preston stayed with her all night. Then, as he prepares to go home, Jesse asks him to stay with her. Luckily, Preston is more than willing to stay with Jesse, and the two go to a local diner to have breakfast. There, Preston and Jesse talk about the past, including their relationship. Jesse apologizes to Preston for suddenly leaving, but she assures him that her decision to leave had nothing to do with him. Jesse then asks Preston how he's been, and that's when he admits he's already married. However, Preston doesn't give more details about his marriage and instead asks Jesse what happened at Leon's wake. Although she's a bit hesitant, Jesse shares that she's been having nightmares and thinks she's going crazy. Jesse tells Preston about the dead woman, saying she's trying to get and kill her. She also mentions the burnt man to Preston, telling him that the man looks at her as if she's responsible for his death. Unsure of what to say, Preston tells Jesse maybe it's just normal for her to have nightmares since she's been going through a lot lately. Then, as if that isn't enough, Jesse tells Preston about the tapes, which he retrieves later. Preston watches one of the tapes with Jesse, and once the video is over, he tells his friend she shouldn't be watching them anymore. At the same time, Preston points out that Kate's readings were mostly wrong, especially the part where she said Jesse loved to swim and never left town. However, Jesse thinks her mother saw her father's death. Unfortunately, Preston says Kate thought she saw Jesse's death, adding that she was wrong about everything else. Then, in the middle of their conversation, Preston receives a message from his wife, so he gives Jesse his number and tells her to call him anytime before leaving. Once Preston is gone, Jesse looks out the window and notices the flashing lights again. Then, that night, Jesse watches another one of her mother's tapes, which shows Kate and Leon throwing a Christmas party. All of their friends are there, including Mrs. Davis, and they eventually announce Kate's pregnancy. After that, Jesse watches the last tape and sees Kate doing a reading, crying and telling her she's already dead. Kate then knocks the camera away, 
and as if on cue, the bottle of alcohol Jesse's been drinking suddenly flies toward the television and breaks. Moments later, Jesse tries calling Preston, but his wife suddenly ends the call upon learning who she is. Then, Jesse notices balls of fire by the bayou, but before she can take a closer look, a mirror upstairs suddenly shatters. Confused, Jesse decides to investigate, and that's when she hears the heavy footfalls of someone running down the stairs. However, nobody's there, but an unseen force suddenly pulls Jesse in front of the mirror. Jesse then sees the dead woman in the mirror, but when she turns around, the woman is already gone. After that, the woman whispers to Jesse to move closer to the mirror, and upon doing so, it suddenly breaks. To make things worse, Jesse finds a small compartment in the wall containing a tape with no label, which she chooses not to watch. The next morning, Jesse wakes up and finds the bottle of alcohol on her bedside table, still intact. Then, she goes out to the bayou and sees the flashing lights again before Preston arrives. Preston asks why she called the previous night, but before Jesse can answer, they both notice the flashing lights across the bayou. Curious? They both go there using an old boat and see some voodoo icons hanging on the trees and a doll in the water. At the same time, they find a gravestone that shows Jesse's full name and birthday. Jesse then wonders if there's something under the gravestone, so they return there later with a shovel. Upon digging up the grave, Preston and Jesse discover the skeleton of a baby. They then give it to Sheriff Pruitt for DNA testing, and he says he'll immediately call Jesse once the test results come out. After that, Preston takes Jesse to their house so she won't be alone for the night, telling her to let him know if she needs anything. The next day, Preston drives Jesse to the house of Mrs. Davis to ask about the baby. The two introduce themselves to the old woman, and Mrs. Davis suddenly refers to Jesse as Jezebel before speaking in a different language. Then, an old man translates what Mrs. Davis just said, saying she recited an old song from Haiti. The man reveals that the song is used for calling the spirits to possess someone, and after that, Mrs. Davis suddenly grabs Jesse by the hair. Mrs. Davis instructs her to tell Moses that she will get what's coming to her, leaving Jesse shocked and confused. Equally surprised, Preston comes to his friend's rescue and immediately takes Jesse home. As they return to Leon's place, Jesse can't help but wonder what the old song exactly meant. So Preston explains that in voodoo, possession is just a part of the ceremony. At the same time, Jesse wants to know if Mrs. Davis and her mother were talking about the same Moses. Determined to get answers, they head to Kate's old church and find Moses' voodoo shrine there. Preston then takes Moses' framed photograph that shows the date of his death, which is the same as Jesse's birth date. Jesse tries to understand what's going on, but several men suddenly show up and beat up Preston before forcing them to leave. When they arrive at Leon's house, Preston tells Jesse to just grab everything she needs because he's taking her to his mother's place. He then reveals that he still thinks about Jesse, not really bothered that she doesn't feel the same. On the other hand, Jesse accepts Preston's offer to live with his mother and quickly packs her belongings once they're inside the house. Preston then takes Jesse's stuff to the car before going back for her, but unfortunately, it's the dead woman woman who's in the vehicle with him. At first, the dead woman softly touches Preston's face, but she soon becomes violent and attacks him. Meanwhile, Jesse is still inside the house, unaware of what's happening to Preston. Unfortunately, Preston is already unconscious when Jesse finds him, so she immediately calls an ambulance. Once Preston is taken to the hospital, Sheriff Pruitt questions Jesse about what's happening. However, when Jesse doesn't respond, the sheriff just informs her that although they don't have the DNA test results yet, they can confirm that the infant was a female. He also says the date on the gravestone is correct and that she was born alive, revealing that she was killed based on the nature of her fractures. Then, when the sheriff leaves, Jesse addresses the dead woman and says she knows she was murdered. Jesse wants to know what the dead woman is trying to tell her, so she lights up some candles and waits for the woman to respond. However, Jesse is interrupted by a call from Sheriff Pruitt, who tells her Preston is already awake and wants to return to her house. The sheriff also reveals that the baby was a black girl, making Jesse wonder if she was her half sister. At the same time, they cross Jesse's DNA with Leon's, but before Jesse can hear what Sheriff Pruitt is about to say, she is startled by the television suddenly turning on. Finding a tape on the table, Jesse finally decides to watch it and sees a newborn white girl crying. A sick Kate is in the video too, saying Jezebel and her father Moses are dead. Kate then tries suffocating the baby before changing her mind and starts chanting, telling Jezebel she'll get what's coming to her. After that, Kate shoots herself, and her ghost suddenly appears behind Jesse. Realizing she's the unwanted presence in the house, Jesse asks Kate if she was telling someone else's fortune, referring to her real daughter and not her. It is then revealed that the real Jezebel was Moses' daughter and not Leon's, so Leon took her the night she was born and snapped her spine. 
As if that isn't horrible enough, Leon placed Jezebel's body with a doll in a baby carriage and put stones inside it before pushing it into the bayou. Shortly after that, Leon shot Moses and burned his house in anger. It is now clear to Jesse that Leon adopted a white baby girl to cover the crime, and that infant is her. At the same time, Jesse finally understands that the men at Moses' voodoo shrine were the ones who buried Jezebel and performed a ceremony for her. Then, when Jesse asks what she can do for Kate, Moses' ghost shows up and prepares her for a ritual that will bring the real Jezebel back to life. After putting a cross on Jesse's forehead, Kate pushes her into the bayou, where the real Jezebel takes her mother's bracelet. Jezebel then resurfaces in Jesse's body, and the unsuspecting Preston immediately saves her. Unfortunately, Preston doesn't notice that there's something different with Jesse, and he eagerly kisses her back before she asks him to take her home. Then, Sheriff Pruitt addresses Jesse as Miss Laurent and asks if she's okay, but she simply smirks and says her name is Jezebel. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like, it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.